Hey guys, I just wanted to make a quick video um, in case anybody finds themselves in the same boat that I am in. Uh, I was rearranging my home theater system and unplugged the PlayStation 4, uh, went to plug it back in, and got some error messages. As it booted up, it told me to connect my controller using a USB device and to press the PlayStation button. And once I did that, it brought me to this screen here. Uh, the safe mode that says I need to connect a USB storage device that contains an update file for reinstallation of 6.0.2 or later. And then it tells me where I can go to download the update file. So I just wanted to make a video uh, showing the steps how to get this PlayStation back to life. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do what it tells us to do and transfer over to a computer real quick get these files onto a USB drive. Alright, so now that we are here at our computer we can go ahead and start the process of creating a boot drive. It's not very difficult but we do have to follow the steps very closely. Uh, if we make any error, even if it's very small, the PlayStation will not know how to find the uh, reinstallation files and when you go to reboot your uh, PlayStation, it's going to give you an error that says cannot find the update files, uh, corrupt update files, etc. So as long as we follow these steps closely, we will avoid a lot of problems. The first thing that we're going to want to do is get a thumb drive that is at least 1.2 gigabytes. I am using a SanDisk that's about a 16 gigabyte drive, and it has worked very well for me. Uh, there's a link to where you can get one of these uh, very inexpensively uh, in the description of this video. If you have a thumb drive that's lying around your house, you can go ahead and try and use it, and it will very likely work. However, if it's a no-name brand or an older drive, uh, sometimes the PlayStation can be very finicky, and it may not like that drive. Um, so if we are running into issues, you may need to splurge and go out and get yourself a new thumb drive. So now that we have the thumb drive connected to our computer, let's go ahead and the first thing that we're going to do is format it into a FAT32 uh, format so that the PlayStation is able to read the thumb drive. And then on Mac, we do that by coming down to the Finder, uh, going into Applications, and opening the Utilities application, uh, and go to Disk Utility. And you can see here on the left hand side is a list of all our drives, both internal and external. Uh, this is our external hard drive here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and format that by clicking erase. First we got to select the drive obviously so that you uh, don't delete your main hard drive. And select erase. And now here we want to um, select the format MS-DOS FAT and the scheme should be master boot record. Name, you can leave untitled, or if you want to name this drive something, feel free. Uh, that part's not important, but the format must be MS-DOS FAT, the scheme, master boot record, and we will go ahead and click erase. And for some reason, when I do this the first time, it always says that the erase process has failed. Click done to continue. So I click done, um, click erase again, Make sure that it's MS-DOS FAT, master boot record, and then click Erase. And the second time it works. So if you're running into, into that as well, I don't know why it doesn't work the first time, but just go ahead and try it twice and it should work for you. Okay, so now that we have um, that drive formatted, we can go ahead and create the files on that drive. So we are going to go ahead and create those folders um, by coming down here to the Finder. And in the Finder, on the left hand side, you can see a list of connected devices. Um, mine has been labeled the U drive, yours may be something a little bit different. Um, but I double click that and it shows me that there's 15.65 gigabytes available, which is the same size as the drive that I'm using and so I know that this is the right drive so it's completely empty that makes sense we erased everything on the drive and reformatted it so we want to create a folder 
called PS4. And we do that by coming up to the little cog icon here, selecting new folder, and then it will create an untitled folder. We click that again and select rename. And we are going to name this PS4 in all capitals. Now, what we're going to do is double click into the PS4 folder, come back up to this cog, select new folder, cog, and rename. And in all capitals, this is going to be named update. And now we can go into the update folder. And this is where we want to put our boot files that we will download. Um, so now that we've formatted the drive and we've created those file folders in the right order on that drive, um, PS4, go into that folder, create an update, go into that folder, we are ready to move our download file into this folder. So we're going to go ahead and minimize this for now um, and open up Safari. And in Safari, um, we are going to go to a page to download this boot drive. The link to the website you want to go to will be in the description of this video. It'll take you to this page here. You can see that as I made this video, the latest version is 6.51. It's very likely that they will continue to release updates and that the latest version will be something different. That is just fine. You want to download the most current um, version of the software. Now on this page are multiple download files and we need to make sure that we download the right one. And this is one of the most common errors is people just click the first download that they see. That is not what you want to do. Um, we want to scroll down to the bottom of the page here under where it says perform a new installation of the system software um, and then down here underneath you can see a little button that says agree and download now this is what you want to click if you download any of the files up above it is going to give your system an error um, so let's go ahead and scroll down and download that file and you can see that the download has begun um, it's about a gig download and so it's going to take just a minute uh, for that to work but that's just fine okay so now that the file has finished downloading uh, we can go ahead and select the file and uh, click over here on the side where it says show in finder this is going to show us where it has downloaded the file to our uh, hard drive and we need to just move the file and we can do that by selecting command C to copy the file go into our U drive into PS4 into update and then command V to paste the file and once again where it's moving a gig across the computer it this can take just a minute. Okay, and so now that that file has moved over, we can go ahead, uh, come down to our thumb drive, and select the eject button. It's now safe to remove that thumb drive. We can go ahead and take that back to our PlayStation 4, and we will show you the next steps. Okay, so here we are at the PlayStation. We have the device powered off and we've inserted our USB drive into the port. We're going to go ahead and hold down the power button for seven seconds or more. You'll hear the first beep and then we're gonna wait until we hear that second beep and then we can release the button. This boots our PlayStation in safe mode. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the lights so we can see the screen. It'll tell you to connect your, or your controller using a USB drive, using a USB cable, excuse me. Press the PlayStation button. And then here on this screen, we're going to initialize the PS4 by reinstalling system software. Scroll over, click OK. After you select OK, the system should go through the initialization process uh, where it essentially installs all the files that your PlayStation will need to operate normally. 
Uh, as part of this, it deletes the users and saved games, etc., that you may have had on your hard drive. Um, but if you're installing a new hard drive or upgrading, then that won't really be an issue. Once the software update is complete, you can go ahead and follow the basic prompts to reconnect the PlayStation to your network, uh, sign in using your PlayStation Network account, etc., and your PlayStation should function as normal. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'd be happy to help. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.